Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me again today, he can see now, it's, it's Pastor Hall. How you doing, my friend? Oh, brother, I am fantastic. I can see you clearly, and my life is better for it. So, I am yeah. a funny looking man. I, you were probably better off before in this one particular. Oh, no, 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 this, this is just giving me those greater glimpses of heaven. Now I tell you, how, what. Long, how long did you go in your life without realizing that you needed glasses? I guess many years now. Cause, uh, my wife, you know, she'd argue, she's like, you know, you squint all the time. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you've needed glasses for like 10 years. I'm like, yeah, probably. So <laughs> I tell you, this is like, this is going to be like when Steph Curry got contacts, like he was already a, a phenomenal three point shooter. Like imagine how good of a pastor you're going to be now that you can read. Um, I know it's like, I can actually, I can actually read Luther in the scriptures now instead of just coming up with it, you know, man, this, this is going to be fun. All right. So with your newfound powers, what are we talking about today? Oh man. Well, talking of that. Yeah. I, I started rereading Luther now. Um, but no, uh, a couple of weeks, this past weekend, we had Dr. Peppercorn down at Zion for our retreat. And he talked about one loaf, the reality of depression, anxiety, and everything we deal with, um, in our lives and the blessings of church. So it, uh, kind of drove me back into some of Luther's letters of spiritual counsel and the reality that Luther himself, you know, dealt with depression all the time. Uh, they didn't call it depression back then. It's called melancholy. But he would he would just have these bouts of, I'm not good enough for God. There's no reason for God to love me. And I mean, this is this is so true for me. We don't like saying that though, because we're Lutheran. We we know sola gratia. So we can't utter these things because you know, then you're just kind of whining and complaining. Well, no, it's why would God ever love me with what I've done, the mistakes I've made, the things I've thought, the the times I haven't helped my neighbor. The the devil comes and he opens that book of the past to you because depression is dealing with the past, anxiety with the future. And Luther would just sit in his bedroom for months and nothing could comfort him. This is this is the gospel guy. Yeah. I mean. You know, he changed his name to Eleuth, taking the Greek word Eleutheros, the freed one. He's the man freed from the devil, freed from depression, and yet struggles with it. And uh, it kind of hit me. It's like, if this guy struggles with it, right? this one who's the champion of the gospel, then not that it's okay you struggle with it, but it's a reality that you struggle with it, that that you fight this darkness you know i think it's an important thing like we we've sort of got inside of christianity uh when it comes especially to to the mental health stuff this idea like rub some jesus on it walk it off it'll be fine and uh definitely if you're still sad that's on you um, yeah exactly so well, and that's the thing luther he was actually comforting a young man one time who was dealing with depression and luther told him don't don't stay by yourself you know, study, study the, the scriptures. And when he says study the scriptures in his time, it's not like us where we can go open our Gideon's Bible in the, the shelf next to the hotel bed. There's, it's not like Bibles are everywhere. He's saying, go to church and hear the word of God, go and hear it read, hear it preached about. So he's saying, go be with other people who struggle as well. Go be with other saints that struggle. And then on top of that, spend time with friends be with people. And he, Luther made this point. He says, flee solitude, Mm. abandon it. And, and depression doesn't want you to do that. It wants you to, but he he never says, put a face on. He doesn't say, go out and pretend like nothing's happening. He just says, go out there. And I think that's the key thing. Be depressed with your friends, with your neighbor, with your spouse, with your, your mom and dad, let them know you're depressed. I mean, that's your mom and dad aren't going to be mad at you. If you tell them you're depressed, they're not going to say, oh, you have nothing to be depressed about. Buck up. They're not going to say that. Your pastor's not going to say that. Your your friends aren't going to say that. Luther didn't say that. He said depression's a reality because of sin, because we, we have this guilt that doesn't go away. And the world reminds us, the devil reminds us, we remind ourselves. And he says, go and be with other people that just want to tell you how much you're loved by God. And, and 
Go ahead. Enjoy that. Yeah. It's an important thing. It's, it's, it's the devil that actually wants us alone in solitude. Um, right. when, when we are a part of the body of Christ, when we are attached to the word, when we are receiving the gifts, that's where we are strengthened by Christ from the outside in. When we are alone, um, that's, that's when we are an open target. Uh, the, the devil will very much speak to us in the midst of our anxiety and our depression and, and our melancholy and say, yeah, just, just stay here. The world's better off without you. And then he'll talk to you. That's not going to yeah. make you better. No. What well, Luther even said to this young man, and on top of that, then just go out and he, he literally says, go out and drink with your friends. Now, I'm not encouraging our 14 year old higher things listeners to go out drinking with their friends. Uh, so that's that's the, the footnote to this uh, commentary. But do go have fun. Go play laser tag. Go bowling. Go play video games. Go play basketball. Whatever it is that is fun for you. Go do it. Mm-hmm. God gave you fun to tell the devil to shut up. And that's the reality. So don't feel guilty about that either. It's not like, okay, if I open Genesis and read all the way to Revelation and fast enough, my depression will go away. No. Uh, It may be something you struggle with. Staupitz, who was Luther's father confessor, right? Johann von Staupitz, told Luther one time, God has given you this to cripple parts of you. Hmm. And most of us don't say, oh, my depression is a gift. We, we see it as something I need to get rid of. Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm not saying thrive in it, enjoy it, and, and like beg God to give you depression. It, I'm not saying that, but when, when we do have it, know that God hasn't abandoned you. He, he hasn't stopped loving you. He still does. It's just a lot harder to see that now. And that's why you have a, a gifted pastor that's there to say, take heart, dear saint. Take heart, little one. God loves you. He's, he's not going anywhere. God will say, he'll, he'll take this, this awful thing and he'll even use this to drive you towards the gospel so that he can comfort you. Right. That's and that. that's the beautiful part about yeah. it. Another yeah. guy that really struggled with depression, this guy named Paul Gerhardt. I mean, you know him, I know him, most people know him, the great hymn writer, but he makes a point in one of his hymns, hymn 724, why not, no, that's 750 something. Um, if God himself before me, And he says, crosses are my daily bread in this reality of bearing the cross. Before there's emos. Yeah, before there's emo. You know, it's like, this is my daily bread, that trials and crosses are my daily bread. And God gives them to me to drive me further into his arms. And these aren't abstract arms. These are concrete ones. Your pastor, your parents, your friends, your fellow parishioners, those arms you're driven into. And they say be at peace. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this because guess what? We're going to a pretty awesome place. We're on the same pilgrimage together. Vocation is really sort of a shield against these kinds of things uh, because in the midst of depression, we can do nothing right. We can do nothing good enough. And so it's hard to be a friend. It's hard to be a student. It's hard to be a, a son or a daughter when all of these things are, are, are sort of on your mind. But vocation says, no, you're already these things and I'm going to work good through you. So just lean into it because your, your ability to be a student is not based on your grades, but simply based on the fact that you go to school and you have a teacher. Um, yeah. There you go. Lean into it and recognize God wants to work through there to give you good gifts, even as he uses you to care for your neighbor. So it, you don't have to sort of feel up to the task. Rather, right. you can say, this is the place God has promised to work, even when I'm sure that I can do nothing good. It's not about the gifts. Well, remember when the disciples came back to Jesus and Luke, they said, even the demons are subject to us. And what does he say? Rejoice not in this, but instead that your names are written in the, in heaven. So the gifts are pretty awesome. Hey, I'm a great speaker. I'm a patient person. I'm a, I'm a strong person. I'm an empathetic person. Those are great. I'm not saying they're not, but rejoice instead in the grace that your name is written in the book of heaven, that before you were even born, Jesus had his blood in the little ink well and the quill of his, his, you know, his bones, just dipping it in and writing your name. And he says, this one's mine. They're going to have days where their gifts are awesome. And they're going to have days where they don't even see any gifts. Instead, they see themselves just as a burden. And yeah, some days you may be a burden, but there's other days where your neighbor's a burden. That's why we bear burdens together. And we continue to abide in our vocations. Like you mentioned, who am I as God has made me to be? 
that grace that's given. That's that's what oh, we have to remind each other of every day. We forget it every day, so we have to remind each other of it every day. Thanks for uh, thanks for reminding me. Hey, brother, thank you for reminding me. It's fun times. Have a good one. Thanks, my friend. Take it easy. Mm-hmm.